Hello, my name is Maria Miller from MathMammoth.com and this is Mathy, my assistant and mascot. In this lesson we're going to study rounding decimals. Our decimals have up to three decimal digits. And you're familiar with rounding rules for whole numbers and the same thing happens with the decimals. If I want to round this to this underlined digit, this is the hundredths digit. Then I like to draw a line right after that digit, right here. Okay, and then I look at the next digit. This one here determines whether I round up or down. Two means I round down, so this here will not change. Basically all that happens is we cut off the decimal at that line. So we get 24.79. Over here, if we are rounding to the nearest tenth, okay, I'll draw my line here. I look at this digit. 9. It means I will round up, so the 7 will be increased by 1, so it becomes 8, and I get 24.8. And the decimal is again cut off at this line. We don't write anything after that. This is rounded to the nearest tenth, so the tenths digit is the last digit we write. This was rounded to the nearest hundredth, so the hundredths digit is the last digit we even write. Over here, we're going to round to the nearest one or unit. My line goes here. I look at 7, so I need to round up. I increase 24 to 25. And I don't write anything after that. Okay? Over here, I would be rounding to the nearest 10. So this is just like the whole number. Rounding 4 means that I round down. And so 2 does not change. And here, Notice this time I cannot cut off the number here and write 2. I need to write 20, okay? I need to actually write 0 in this place. I cannot just cut it off. With decimals, I need to cut it off here. Not write any zeros or anything after that. With whole numbers, it works a little different. You have to write zeros after the place you're rounding to. Okay, let's look at some other examples. Round to the nearest 1, tenth and hundredth. These two numbers. So, if I round this to the nearest 1, I put my line here, it's going to get cut off here. 0 means I round down, so this does not change, it's just going to be 25. Now this number, if I round to the nearest 1, I put my line here, and 2 here means that I round down, so this does not change, so I get 0. And yes, it is definitely very possible that you round something and you get 0. Okay. You think of, you know, is it nearer 1 or 0? And it is nearer 0. Run it to the nearest tenth next. This is the tenths place here. Put my line here. 7 means I need to round up, so this changes and is increased by 1, so we get 25.1. Over here, tenths place. 8 means I round up, so I get 0 0.3. And then to the nearest hundredth, over here, 7 means I round up, so this just changes by 1, and we can 25.08. And over here, rounding to this place, 7 means I round up, so 8 changes to 9. We get 0 0.29 or 29 hundredths. Mark on the number line these numbers and run to the nearest tenth. Matthew, what are you doing? Trying to jump? Oh no! What are you doing? Oh, he wants to jump on the number line. I don't know, Matthew. You might mess it up. Oh, well, okay, okay, okay. Okay, I'll let you jump on. Where are you now, Matthew? He's at two and two tenths, right? Where did you jump? He's at three and one tenth. There you go. That's enough. Okay, let's mark this on the number line. 2.15. Okay. Let's look at the number line first, because it only has 2 and 3. So we need to figure out what these tick marks are. And between 2 and 3, the number line is divided into 10 parts, so those parts are tenths, right? And so this would be 2 and 1 tenth. I'll write it here. 2 and 1 tenth. Next tick mark is 2 and 2 tenths, and so on. This one here is 2 and 1 tenth and 5 hundredths. 
It means that I can go on the number line to two and one tenth over here and a little bit further. Five actually means it's exactly the midpoint here. Okay, because each tenth here, each interval of one tenth would be divided into ten new parts to get the hundredths. And so we go five hundredths further, exactly in the midpoint. And that one will be rounded to here, to this one. Because it's rounded up. It has five, it's going to be rounded up. So we get two and two tenths. Next one, 2.46. I will first find 2.4 here, over here, and then go, imagine if this was divided into ten new parts, and I would go six lines further, six tick marks further here, There. And then that one is rounded up too, over here. So we get two and five tenths. This one is just a little bit past two. It's between this and this. Imagine this here divided into ten new parts, and I would take the fourth tick mark. Okay, so this one will be rounded down to two. But I need to write here 2.0, not just two. Because we're rounding to the nearest tenth, my line is here, I need to write the tenths digit here and only cut it off after the line. Okay, still rounding to the nearest tenth over here. Let me put these lines here. Okay. Eight means we will round up. So here I get 2.3. Eight means I round up, so I get 2.9. One means I round down, I get 3.0. Now we will mark those on the number line. This one, okay, it has thousands here, but I can barely mark those when it has hundreds, okay? So the thousands, I cannot possibly draw tick marks thinly enough there to actually make any difference between 2.28 and 2.282. So I'll just look at 2.2 first of all, and go to 2.28 would be the eighth tick mark here, and then a little bit further, but it's not going to make any difference. It's over here and round it over there, of course. 2.881 is 2.8, and then 2.88 would be here and round it up there. And then 3.019. I first go to 3.0, and then to the very first tick mark would be 3.01. Okay, and round it up. Lastly, we're going to look at the nines in rounding which sometimes presents difficulties, but there's a trick to it. Matty, what is it? Yeah, you love that trick, right? Or shortcut or trick, okay? You're rounding up and you have a nine that you need to increase by one, but you cannot just put 10 there, okay? For example here, rounding to the nearest hundredth, five means here that we need to round up. So nine, you would need to increase it by one, but you cannot because you cannot squeeze 10 in here. Instead, look at these two digits here. 2 and 9, think of it as a number 29, and increase that by 1, 30, okay? So I get 3.30. I need to write a 0, remember? It only gets cut off after this. It is rounded to the nearest hundredth, so I need to have the hundredths digit there. Here. 8 means we round up, but there's 9 there. Imagine, look at this number 79 here, so to speak, and increase that by 1 into 80. So we get 8.0. Over here again, after our 9, there's 5. So 9 we cannot increase by 1 to 10. So what we do is look at this 1 and 9 as a number 19 and increase that to 20. I get 620. Okay, here. Again, look at this 79, so to speak, and increase that to 80. So you have 580, like that. Now, the same thing happens, but we have two nines. Let me draw my cutoff lines here. Okay, 6 means we round up, but there's 99 there. So 99 gets increased to 100, so to speak, so we have 100, but the decimal point is here, 1.00. And again, I have to have those zeros there, so that I will have the hundredths digit there. 
Okay, nine needs increased by one. How can I do that? So I look at this 99 here and increase that to 100. Okay, but the actual answer is 10.0. 599.72. You can probably see it's going to be rounded to 600. You just look at this 599 number, round it to 600. Here, 29.995. Lots of nines there. Okay? So when we're increasing this nine and we cannot increase this nine, we cannot increase this nine, this is the first one we can increase to three. So what happens? You can, as if, look at the number 2999. It gets increased to 3000, so we will have 3000. Zero, zero, zero. Actually, exactly 30.00. Zero, zero. Okay, I hope this was helpful.